The note names in Western music include seven letters, including sharps and flats of those letters. But as many viewers have pointed out, it seems a little odd that the key with no sharps or flats is C major and not A major. And in fact, C does seem to have some sort of heightened importance in Western music. It's concert pitch. It's the first key we learn how to play on the piano. It's the note that fixed do is based on. But shouldn't that be A? It seems like it's a little bit of a mistake in naming. But, I mean, in music theory, 3 plus 3 equals 5, so really anything goes. Anyway, how do we end up here? Spoiler alert, his name is Hawkbald. So, in ancient Greece, music theorists had developed these tetrachords. There were three different types, chromatic, inharmonic, and diatonic. Over time, they decided that diatonic was the most natural and it was certainly the most popular. We'll focus on that one. Of course, it was only a matter of time before they discovered that you could get a lot more notes out of it if you just started stringing together diatonic tetrachords. This is known as the greater perfect system. Most of the tetrachords are overlapping and are called conjunct, but there is one right in the middle that is separate, and it's called disjunct. And in order to complete a two octave span, they added a lowest note and gave it this really long name. Second, in the 9th century, some Frankish monks rebuilt the scale while they were working on another project. They came up with eight scales. Four of them they called authentic, and four of them they called plagal. And they gave them these really fun Greek names. You'll notice that the scale that goes from C to C is called Hypolydian. That's important. Next, we move on to another Frankish monk about a hundred years later, called Hochbald of Saint Amand. He wrote lots of stuff, including a poem about bald men, but today we're mostly concerned with a treatise he wrote around 880, in which he put letter names on every note in the Greek greater perfect system, mercifully changing the name of the lowest note to A. And thank goodness he did. Can you imagine trying to play a proslambata menace chord? However, he didn't stop at G and labeled every note in the system running from A to P. But an anonymous treaty was published around the year 1000 in Milan that recognized octave equivalency, and therefore ran from A to G starting over at the octave. That being said, Huckbald mapped the scales onto particular pitches, with the four authentic ones being mapped onto D, E, F, and G. As the centuries rolled on, the church modes continued with the same labels, with this student named Guido adding a new lowest note somewhere in the 11th century. He called it gamma. In Guido's system, because of this hymn, you could start on either C, F, or G. But we only had naturals at this point, no accidentals. In the 16th century, a German music theorist published a treatise establishing an authentic mode on both C and A, which he called Ionian and Aeolian, respectively. It was also in and around this time that Western music was progressing towards a sense of tonality, in which the major key lines up with Ionian mode and the minor key lines up with Aeolian mode. So the major key became associated with the mode that starts on C. Later, more accidentals were added, allowing major keys to be played using any starting pitch. But, the note name given to the lowest note of the Ionian mode, using only white keys with no sharps or flats, was C. Thanks to the Greeks, some 9th century Frankish monks, some random 10th century Italian dude, and a 15th century German. Thanks for watching this episode of 2 Minute Music Theory. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss an episode. Also, be sure to check out my other channel, Jesse Strickland Music, which is home to all of my compositions. And if you're the kind of person who uses social media, be sure to connect with me over there.